Hello, my name is Boško and I come, I come from the Yosef Stefan Institute and the University of Lugan. I'm presenting our solution to the fake news spreaders task. In this task, we are asked to determine if an uh, author who, who writes his content on Twitter is a fake news spreader or he is not. The languages this task was proposed was in English and Spanish. We, for each author, we were given 30 tweets and the data was balanced. We had 150 positive, 150 uh, negative samples for uh, both languages. The task was to evaluate it on the classification of errors. The motivation behind the solution of this task is that uh, the fake news make a significant impact on society. With the ever-growing amounts of data created on a daily basis, uh, human curators find it hard to determine uh, and to control all the content that is out on the internet. A uh, significant part of the data that generated on a daily basis is fake. So for computers to understand this data, uh, we need uh, some rep uh, numerical representations. We wanted to, to analyze how these representations that are based on the latex semantic analysis uh, are expressive in multilingual settings and how it can be learned, how will they perform such tasks. For uh, this, we first uh, defined our pre-processing as concatenating uh, all of the author tweets uh, and afterwards removing the punctuation URL hashtags and finally the stop words. Uh, by the end of this pipeline, we had prepared the clean data. Uh, this clean data was later to be used for in our future generation and in the future generation step we decided to use character and word engrams for which were the characters we did we decided to use uh, of sizes one and two and for the word we decided we decided to use character of sizes two and three and uh, this all of these generated features were to be evaluated on the type IDF um, by calculating the type IDF. And uh, afterwards, we obtained a document representation which had many features, up to thousands. And this representation, this space was sparse since um, we didn't have so uh, many examples. And somehow we wanted to reduce the dimensionality of this. And we did something known in the field of uh, text mining uh, under the name of fake and semantic analysis. This takes the original uh, space and tries to somehow reduce its dimensions to, in order to find a new space, which in turn is uh, latent uh, and uh, consists of the words, patterns, and features that are captured by it. Uh, mathematical tool to solve this is the singular value decomposition of matrices. After applying this to our original type IDF matrix, we obtained the LSA space and the LSA representation for each author. Here we can see how this data can be visualized after obtaining the LSA representation and reducing it to two dimensions. We can see that some clusters emerge and sample the data is separable for some instances. Uh, we, we use two different models for solving this task, uh, machine learning models, and both of them based on the stochastic gradient descent approach. The first one was the linear uh, SVM and the second one was the logistic regression. We tried to solve this uh, both monolingual and multilingual. For the monolingual part, we developed two different models, but for the multilingual model, we developed a single unified model where we merged all the authors together and uh, did the pre-processing in the space generation. After this, we, uh, evaluate, uh, we evaluated the models on the tenfold grid search on 90% of the data, and we trained them this while evaluating on the hidden holdout set consisting of 10% of the data. Uh, for optimizing our models, we can constructed a custom grid search, which was based on a uh, number of generated features by diagrams and the uh, number of dimensions uh, to be reduced. And uh, for each tuple of these parameters, we trained a separate model, both uh, SVM and logistic regression, 
and we penalize this model by the elastic regularization. Uh, this regularization incorporates both the last and the rich regularizations in some manner. Here we can see our whole pipeline, which consisted of generating world and character engrams. Afterwards, performing the SVD, we obtained uh, a list representation, and to which we applied two different classifiers and learned and evaluated them in their classification characters. We repeated these steps for every single tuple on our custom defined grid. Uh, here we can see that the best performing model was one that had uh, 5,000 features and based on the linear regression model as the, for the multilingual task. Uh, we alternatively tried to solve model, this task as previously mentioned by developing a single model for uh, each language and by employing some semantical features from doc to and birth representation. Additionally, we tried different tokenizers and we tested some automatic machine learning models as people. But this uh, failed or scored similarly to our proposed model. On the development set, we can see that our multilingual models uh, scored highest, uh, achieving precision or uh, classification, higher classification accuracy. Both of these models uh, were based on the linear regression and had 5,000 total features reduced to 768 dimensions. The best performing model on the test set we evaluated on the hidden set and both of these models were multilingual and they scored similar on the Spanish but uh, the one that used less features scored better on the English test set. And this then the third out of 66 entries. The conclusion that can be drawn from this approach is that the space that we obtain by word and character engrams is a good problem representation of the problem spans once it is reduced to a new latent space. The semantic features didn't introduce significant improvements to this task. And uh, we somehow concluded that multilingual space maintained the structure and the work patterns appearing in the data. And the multilingual approach tackled the problem better compared to every other monolingual approach that we used. Um, additionally, we can further work on exploring this proposed approach in more languages than languages that are less represented in order to see how it interferes with such problems and how its performance is uh, uh, achieving. On the other side, we can try to enrich this space with background knowledge about entities appearing in the text in order to gain some more insights about the author, about the uh, things he uh, tweets about, and finally, in order to decide if something is a fake news or not. And with this, I'm concluding my presentation. Thank you for listening.